So I'm confused by the way you spell your name. Oh, God. Is that a mistake? No. Um, okay, here's the story. <laughs> My mom's going to kill me. It's spelled with two E's. <laughs> so... Hi, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Dan. We yep. welcome to the studio, Pete Montezingo. Yo. <laughs> Hi. Woo. So, uh, two things. I actually like a bunch of things, dude. What's? Uh, how long have you been awake for? How'd you know? I, I heard. <laughs> Wait a minute. I heard rumors and rumbling that he's been awake for seventy-two hours. It's seventy-two hours. So that's why I'm drinking an energy drink. Why? Um, I'm editing my music video. I have control issues, so I'm like, oh, I'll just edit the video. And, you know, I got in the weeds, and um, here we are. I haven't slept. <laughs> what does it genuinely mean to get into the weeds? Like, basically, you know, down the rabbit hole. So I have, like, all these, like, special effects that I'm doing, and, like, you know, now I'm taking it to the next level. <laughs> what, what does that mean? It means instead of just, you know, like, a special effect here, now, for some reason, I'm, like, going, I'm, like, going underneath the ground and now I'm underground and I mean it's just like insane and so I'm like I have to do this I can't go back now but okay hold on. So do you have anybody like editing with you or is it literally just you in a room I me and one other person yeah. okay and why do we not take breaks like who, who's <laughs> imposing a deadline that's this strict I don't I don't take breaks I don't like breaks I, when I'm like when I sit there at the computer like I'm in it you know like I can't move I won't like take a phone call I can't I can't you know, like multitask unless I'm completely done with the one thing. So, um, I mean, I won't even eat. So it's insane. Is I that like have a problem? Is that like ADHD <laughs> or something? Like, yeah. because like it, your fear of like not totally focusing means you may never come back to it because you'll exactly. then hop to a thousand other things. Exactly. No, that's definitely what it is because as soon as I'm gone, then I'm never interested in going back. It'll never get done. Yeah. So, you move on. Yeah. Do you have ADHD? Yeah. We also have the same birthday, so I'm, like, really interested. I've never met somebody who, like, The Rock has our birthday. But Wait, I, really? Yeah, May 2nd. Yeah, you're, and you're three years older than I am, but we're, we're <laughs> we close. We don't talk about that. No, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. My bad. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, but I, 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 you know, I've never actually, like, talked to somebody who has my same birthday. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. So, you're I a Taurus. Yeah, I'm a Taurus. I'm like, I believe in the signs, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. The moon, the stars, the oceans, whatever the fuck. Yeah. You believe in that stuff? <laughs> oh, 100%. Do you really? Yeah. It's like all my relationships with anybody are always perfectly matched with like the opposing sign. You mm -hmm. know, like my mom's a Scorpio. And oh, we have the yeah. most complicated relationship. And it's like that makes sense, Taurus and Scorpio. You, that's actually the most fulfilling relationship to have. One of the most that's fulfilling true. relationships to have is true. a Taurus and a Scorpio. Yeah. Interesting. It's it's very weird. But then my brother's a cancer, and I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get along. Nah. <laughs> Is this your brother who's also a teacher? Yeah. It's really interesting, your life. You've been going after fame for a hot second, my guy. Yep. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It really is. Like, you know, like, let's call it what it is. You've, I, I had no idea that you made it to the high ranks of Wipeout. Oh my okay, God. you auditioned no, for the X Factor. Yes, dude. He made it to like he came in second place on Wipeout. Yeah, oh they my called God. you Smack Efron. Oh my God, PTSD. <laughs> so sorry, but it's true. <laughs> We're talking to his celebrity. Oh God, I found the video. I'm watching it. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's like embarrassing. Can too. you just explain to me like your first understanding of what fame was and is like? in your life Do you I remember think, well yeah i think all it was is that you know my whole family are little people except me and so i was just always jealous that they got all the attention and so i just wanted to go after everyone looking at me because everyone would look at them and i think that's where it like started when i was probably like five and then from there it just got complicated and interesting <laughs> hey, can you like talk to me about what it means to live in a family where everybody is looking at them and nobody really is looking at you, but in almost every situation. And yeah. that's hard for all parties involved. Right. Because like I don't I don't think you ever get to an age where gawking like that or or looking at, in any capacity is 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 normal or tolerable, you know, no matter how used to it one becomes. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because I remember I would always go out like to the grocery store or to 
like a doctor's appointment or something. And I have, always have to reintroduce myself because they thought I was just some random person taken along with the family or like a family friend. And I'm like, I'm like eight, <laughs> you know? Um, That's... So it was like, it, it was weird. Um, but then it's also great because then I was able to like spy, you know? So at the grocery store, if people would, you know, talk crap or something like, oh, look at those, the short people or whatever, then I would, you know, have no problem going up and, into their face and being like, that's my family. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you realized your family was different? Um, yeah, actually. It was when I, like, went to school <laughs> for the first time, like, preschool, like, kindergarten, like, early, you know, elementary school. I remember looking up at the parents and being like, that's so weird that people look up. Mm -hmm. Like, I would just look straight, you know? Um, so it was always interesting and my mom couldn't hold me until I was after one year old and like my feet would dangle off her, her lap and she'd be like, Hur! and I'm like, that'd be, and I'm like so jealous that all the dads were like swinging the kids in the air and stuff. And I'm like, I want to do that. But, um, yeah, it's interesting, but to me, it's just normal. So it's weird to me that most like 99.9% .9 of the population has no idea what that's like, L you know? Literally, like that, you, you are very, and it's interesting because it's not until later in life do you realize that yeah. fame is actually going to come from who you are right. in your life because you do outwardly chase it, right? It's Wipeout, it's X Factor, you're in <gasps> more than one boy group at a certain point in time. Oh my God, you did you, your You're in one group <laughs> that like one day you name it and the next month you're disbanded. Yeah. Like, <laughs> There's you. Oh you God! You quite the the the, 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 the timeline. It's of, hard out here, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But I, I got to give you the most credit in the world because I do believe that so much a part of what it means to be any sort of artist or creator is consistency, mm -hmm. and this ability to use the nose as fuel and. The silence or just people ignoring you or looking past you or just really just not giving you any time of day, using that as fuel to continue, that's like really hard to do. And it's really what separates people from those who make it and those who don't. Yeah. And I, I learned that too. I thought everyone just had this fuel for, you know, that. And then I realized, oh, wait, no, I just, you know, have a lot of, um, a lot of people that I want to prove wrong, you know, and that really is like a, the fuel, you know, it's not even like prove wrong maybe, but it's just like, no, I can, you know. Um, Do you feel like you can or have you? <laughs> I mean, now it's different, you know, um, like that's more when I was like younger, you know. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's really just comes down to, I mean, now we're getting philosophical, but it just comes down to being happy, you know, like, yeah, I would like I used to chase fame and then now I'm like, okay, how can I just enjoy life and then also make a living, <laughs> you know? Um, but also like inspire people and inspire myself. And, you know, the ADHD always wants me to do new projects, like, you know, now I'm singing again. And so it's like I can never just relax. <laughs> At what point though do you realize that putting like the the future of your success and career in the hands of other people, I maybe mean, not in the hands, but like reliant on the participation of others. Let's just say that, mm. right? Like other people buying in and supporting you and like giving you a chance. When do you realize that like it's actually you that is the story and it's the apartment that you happen to be living in across the street from a fucking hotel. Jesus. Or I don't know everything about me. No, it's really <laughs> interesting. It's my second thing. <laughs> it's just very fascinating that, like, like at one point you're trying to become a, a, a singer in a boy group, and then the next you've, you're you literally crashing drones on into <laughs> hotels. And it's getting incredible traction on the internet. <laughs> it, but it's a right. friend that helps you with TikTok, right? You go to somebody who's also viral on the platform. No. What was it? Uh, wait, what do you mean? What, so like, how'd you get to TikTok? Like, really, like, when did you realize that it was you that was the story? Or you that was oh, the thing? So I was in a boy group, and my label was in Nashville, and they just moved us out to Nashville, and we were, like, finally starting to tour. And um, then COVID happened, and they are like, everyone go home! And I was like, 
fuck? My one shot, you know, like I finally thought I was on the brink of it, you know. And then and this I, is Euphoria. Oh five God. West. No, this was Five West. Oh, yeah. shit, sorry. There's a lot of them. We got, it's hard to keep track, you know? <laughs> you guys are insane. <laughs> the, the way you spelled Euphoria was really wild. We thought it was so cool. <laughs> we were like, yeah, we're different and like cool. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god but so anyways um they sent us home and i was like well my career's over my life's over i've been doing this for way too long and it's time to give up and it was that mindset the first week i was like i'm just gonna post a video on this like tiktok app and i just did something at my apartment and i have a ball pit in my apartment <laughs> and um that why went viral because why i don't not? know ball pits are awesome <laughs> <laughs> so you had this before you were like an online creator yeah oh you're genuinely just weird eh yeah. God, party, yeah like, party with a weirdo. It's not a lie. No, I know, but like some people are like, oh, you, you know, you have a ball pit in your living room because that's what the internet tells you to do. I mean, who? It, I mean, yeah. No, you just, <laughs> I just feel like you, you inherently wanted a ball pit. Where was it in your house? Um, so you have to climb up this pipe ladder that I made through like my Narnia room. <laughs> it's oh. like insane. Um, but basically, I'm just a big kid at heart, you know. So explain this to me. You go from Nashville to LA. And you move into an apartment, downtown LA? Yeah. This is where you build a ball pit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> those high ceilings, you know. Sick. Oh, it's like a loft. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So the first thing you post is your ball pit? <laughs> and that obviously goes viral because obviously. who the fuck has a ball pit in their <laughs> house? I don't know why no one does, but. Why did you really want that? I mean, I don't know. I'm just a big kid at heart. Don't you miss going to McDonald's and playing in the ball pit? No. <laughs> no. They're yeah, all filled with germs. You, no. ever, you ever like reach to the bottom and pull out something weird to be like a happy yeah. chicken nugget or something? <laughs> like, yeah, like <laughs> bones. Like yeah. the human <laughs> remains. Yeah. Like what do you got going in your ball pit? Dude? Like who do you, like who's in that with you? Oh yeah, that's for next time. I'll I'll <laughs> <laughs> like, let's like hey, welcome to my house. Like, let's hang out. Had a great dinner with you. You wanna come and like get comfortable and watch Netflix from my ball, ball pit? It's kinda cool. Listen, you guys are welcome anytime. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'll come check it out. <laughs> you definitely would. <laughs> are you still sleep? And you're still sleeping in that like ice cave type situation? Yeah. Can you explain that? One? What? <laughs> so, we come like in downtown LA. They came with um, my unit came with armoires, and I saw the top off on one of them, <laughs> and I hung a rope from one of the water pipes, and I just thought like huh? I don't exercise as much as I should, and I don't want to force myself, uh, like, I don't want to get myself into a situation where I'm having a one night stand. So, obviously, <laughs> the only way around this is to, like, go, climb up a rope through a wardrobe into a little hole on, like, you know, the, the, the top of my apartment, like, loft area. And um, that's where I slept for a while. But now I have a bed. Oh, congratulations. Uh, Wait, can I see a visual of whatever the fuck you're talking What? <laughs> what? What? You sleep in, is it like a tunnel? Pretty much. You yeah, sleep in it's it? It's like, like this, and but it goes all the way back. Um, it, like I would wake up and hit my head in the morning on the cement like ceiling. And then the first time actually that I, I slept up there, I got a concussion. <laughs> because like I woke up at 6 a.m. and. <laughs> Here. Why are Do we it. doing this? We're watching you get into your ice cave. Do you you so you sleep in this now? This looks no, not anymore, not anymore. Okay, healthy. But you also said something we completely missed. You said you did this to prevent yourself from having a one night stand. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you gotta do. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so, brother. I gotta get creative. <laughs> I think there's a bunch of other reasons why people. And there he is, off to bed. He's gone. Yeah, because that's exactly what you do to prevent people from staying the night. <laughs> That's exactly what you do to get people to run away. That's crazy. You're interesting, eh? I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm past that phase a little bit. But Where are we today? What's different? Back to the ball pit. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> but you have a ball pit still? Oh, yeah. That's never leave it. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool, cool. By the way, Party with a Weirdo is your record. Yeah. Why are we going back into music now? Um, Because I realize, like... Music is actually, I think, what I'm the most passionate about. Um, like, I feel like the videos I do are great, and it's I've been able to sustain and build a career, and it's been awesome in so many ways. But I, I like 
I just feel the need to always keep expressing myself in different ways. And I, I feel like for music, it's something that I know that I'm comfortable with. And I wanted to give it like an actual chance because I had tried for like six years. So um, this is like my time for myself to try and prove, you know, that I can I can do it um, or not. <laughs> what, what was it about music that became a vehicle for you initially? Um, I don't know. I think it was just the boy band thing because I wanted like a brotherhood and I wanted to feel, I think kind of goes back to like the dwarf family thing because I would always see people like connecting who are similar and um, with the same goal. And I don't know, it was that camaraderie that I was always craving. And then through that, I realized, oh shit, I actually like love music. Um, and I grew up doing music. I, I was, I sang since I was like 14 and play trombone like my whole life. Um, and I've just felt like I've been good at it. It's just, Feels good, I guess. Hello, beautiful human. Every year, millions of gamers experience IGSS, inadequate gaming setup syndrome. Luckily, a cure has been found. You have to go beyond. With the Vibersonic Mattress by Beyond Sleep. This thing has six built-in subwoofers, USB ports for charging, LED lights so you never stub your toe. It gives you an acoustic massage when you want it, plus adjustable degrees of comfort. This right here is the best way to game ever. Hear your IGSS today at beyondsleeptech.com. It's really wild. I do feel like you've lived a life where you've wanted attention and eyes to be on you, but for the right reasons. And then also, like, it's so interesting for somebody to look at a career in music, specifically as it relates to a boy group or a band, Mm. And want it for just the idea of camaraderie, companionship, and this idea that like you're with people who look similar, do similar things, like really are connected by this similar thing. Yeah, but see, it wasn't until I was older until I realized that because I really thought it was just music at the beginning, and then a couple of years later, I looked back, I was like, oh wait, you, have, you need to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, wild because yeah. you. There is something that I don't think people think about, right? It, and when you, to be, like, do you see yourself in your mom, though? Because you look like your mom. Yeah, I'm, and we're very similar. Totally. And, like, when I watch your videos, you yeah, you act very, very much the same. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there is, like, you can't, you, you can kind of make the case that, like, you don't look like your family, but you do, like, you look like your mom. Right. You really do. I mean, I tease my mom, though. I'm like, are you sure there wasn't a milkman? Because not only am I tall, but also I look nothing like my dad. So just like throwing it out there. Like maybe one day you can tell me. But no, I no, she wouldn't. But there's a 75% chance that you're going to be a dwarf. Yeah. Do you think about life that way ever and what that could have meant for you? Yeah. I, and I think that's why I feel so passionate about the things that I do and what I make content about and music about because I, I feel like I'm. It just makes me feel like I'm here for a purpose, you know, whether it's in my head or not. It just helps motivate me to, um, yeah, to speak about the things that I'm passionate about, I guess. I really think you should see it as being here for a purpose. You have 18 million people who are tuned into you just on YouTube alone. Yeah. And then it's a lot of younger people. Mm -hmm. I, I think you do have a purpose here that's larger. And I think there's an... You're educating people on what it means to be so different, but yet so deeply the same. Right. And also, I'm like, I've been realizing that over the last couple of years, like, so many little people creators, for example, um, don't really get taken seriously for some reason. Like, people are like, don't view them sometimes as human, I hate to say, but I, I really feel like that's a lot of it. And so, when I make videos about it with my mom or with my family, it's always been so nice to get, it's like I can advocate for them and people will unfortunately, but fortunately take it more, more seriously. Um, and I've really felt like that has been such a good thing. And I've been like really excited about, you know, all the things that I can help teach people about dwarfism specifically. Um, because I feel like most people just don't know anything about dwarfism really, except, you know, oh, it's, they're little. It's like, no, there's just so much more to it. And if you really understood, 
then you could maybe have some empathy. Or you what, could, what do you wish people understood? Because the history that little people have been going through for centuries is insane. really, really dark. I know. And really tragic and really unfair. And people don't even know that, you know? And by the way, we're talking about it. So your TikTok for you page should throw some video on your feed from a, a, a creator who understands firsthand. I see videos sometimes of like the history. It's really it's 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 hard, mm -hmm. but what do you wish people understood that they don't? That they're just like everyone else, you know. It's like everyone's always focused on what do we call them, you know? What sh how should we do this? How should we do that? And it's like no, just treat them like a normal person, <laughs> like they're just people, you know. And I really think people, for the most part, have a hard time just recognizing that. Um, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because when they view like you know an older person they're supposed to be like an authority figure and, but they're looking down. Like maybe it's more of a sexual psychological thing for them. But, um, I don't know. My hope is just everybody's able to just be nice. You know, what are you trying to do with your music in terms of a story and a message? Clearly it's your story. Yeah. You're, I don't want to call you a weirdo. <laughs> you can. Yeah. But you, a may, you may be the one that you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's the thing. Like I, like, it's been a really interesting last couple of years with everything for me. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly, like, my end game and, you know, where I want to go and everything. Um, big picture. And I'm just now kind of this year coming into uh, the idea that, like, no, I am I feel actually the same as my family. Oh, wait, that's actually the same as my friends. Oh, wait, that's actually the same as everybody. Like, everybody feels like they're weird or feels like they don't fit in in some way. And it's like, okay, well, we should actually embrace that because once we do, we realize that could be actually a superpower um, because we see our perspective on life different than everyone else. So if we're able to just run with that, then I feel like it only will help. So... Do you have an album ready to go, or are you just doing song by song? What's your, what, what are you thinking? So right now it's going to be kind of a waterfall release, so every like six to eight weeks there'll be another single that, that releases. And I don't know, we're just trying to figure out what's what might work. Um, so we're just kind of putting stuff out there and testing it, but I wanted to do this one first specifically because this is what I am passionate about, just being weird. <laughs> um and yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like down the road, but I have been in the studio a lot. So, and it's been really fun and refreshing and it's a new creative process and it's just really rejuvenating. What about you is weird? What about me is weird? Yeah. I don't know. Cause I don't really think it's that weird. Cause it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that you thought was weird, I guess. I mean, you've been awake for 72 hours. And yeah, that, I mean, that's crazy. Have you ever done that? No. And you're a tourist. You've never done that. No, I've been awake for like a day. Well, maybe actually, I, I would crash though. Eventually, I can function on three hours of sleep. Like what I would do is sleep for three hours, get up, and then work another eighteen hours. Ah, uh, that's what I could. I would do that all the time. And then sometimes, if I like, honestly, took Adderall at the wrong time of the day, it's gonna bring up Adderall too. Yeah, I'd be screwed. <laughs> like, do I do that here? No, it's fine. There's there's many moments like when I was. You, uh, I worked at Nickelodeon for many years and I would just work crazy hours on crazy schedules. I'd travel all the time and I would just like, if I took Adderall like, like, like 20 minutes too late, oh, I'm screwed. And then yes. I'm not sleeping and then I have to wake up and be on camera at 5 a.m. And if you don't eat, you're yeah. screwed. It's a whole mess. It's a whole mess. Dude, I remember one time I did. I probably went three production days without eating anything. And the head of the network came up to me and was like, you need to eat something. And she really? like, literally had somebody go and get me a chicken sandwich. Yeah. Did it's, you eat it? Yeah, I did. Kind <laughs> of. Like, like, I took a pity bite, but like, whatever. Yeah. So I've never, like, I haven't done that in a long time, though. Mm. It's been a long time. You do this okay. often? Yeah. No, I do this a lot. Also, because I'm still trying to figure out, like, my team building and everything. So a lot I of it, it is really just myself in a, in a lot of ways, or it's just, you know, my problem of giving up control. <laughs> so, you know, I'll do this to myself. But hopefully not in the future. <laughs> You've also been going through a lot of life, too, at the same time. Yeah. Is your mom doing okay? Uh, that's, uh, I mean, it's on and off. Like, yeah. she had three surgeries. Um, oh. The last one was super promising, and we're still really optimistic. But 
she has been like starting to not feel great again. Um, and it's just been a lot. Life is hard, dude. Aging is really hard. Yeah, tell me about like, it. Like, watch, <laughs> like watching our, like it's watching, watching my parents' age is really difficult. Yeah, it's like really difficult. How do you cope with it? Like, I don't know. I, you, you know, I think a part of me, like I'm just, just always being honest. Like a part of me probably distanced myself out of like this. I don't know, fear, coping, coping like a bunch of things there. You mm-hmm. know. Uh, yeah, but the, but that's not the answer, right? The answer is really to be there and be present and to only do everything you can, right? Yeah, and and that's all you what you can control because you don't right? want to regret it either, you know, hundred percent. And but it's like it's hard, you know. It it still feels weird because I don't know about you, but I just feel like I'm still a kid at heart. Like I feel like I'm twelve years old, and it's like my parents are still, you know, young. Yeah, and so it just kind of creeps up on us. It does. And it, it, it's like when you least expect it, and then once it hits, it kind of just keeps rolling. Yeah. Yeah, I've been dealing with it for the last year. It's been really something else. It's it's something that, like, you get, like, you, you summed it up perfectly. Like, you never really think it's going to be something, and then it just, boom. Yeah, and then on that, like, everything's really kind of different from that moment forward, you know. Yeah. Do your parents live in town? No, they live on the other side of the country, so it's, like, particularly really difficult. Um so it's a lot to balance, lots to rely on other siblings. It's a whole thing. It, but life is really difficult. Yeah. Is art at all, though, an outlet? Do you see it as such? Or, like, how do you view music and or anything that you really make? Um, I feel like that's the only thing that I know how to do is create and music and just feeling inspired and maybe that's partly the ADHD as well because you know we can't do anything unless we're interested totally and so I feel like it is always the creative outlet but it's always difficult because it's like at one point does a creative outlet because when it's your job then it's like you got to figure out another creative outlet within the creative outlet so it's trying to navigate at least for me but do you see music as a challenge or do you see it as a passion Both. I think it's a challenge because I've done this for so long. So I'm like, I feel a little bit like tired from trying for all those years with my old previous groups. And so I know how, like, I know how it worked and I know it's different now, but it's very intimidating still. Um, But it's also great because it does, you know, rejuvenate me and it helps me like see things differently instead of just making another video or doing something else. It's like, oh, this is makes my heart happy and it's your story yeah and you're doing it from a totally different place yeah yeah and it feels more authentic in a way because it's like just me instead of you know attaching like the dwarfism thing or um some other things that still are me but this is i feel like purely from my heart and that also helps when i go into the writing rooms because i'm able to like really share and be vulnerable and I feel like that's also kind of therapeutic. Oh, it is. It totally yeah. is. What are you thinking? So take us into the room when you were writing Party with a Weirdo. How did it start? Where did it come from? I know it's you, but like where did it, where did it start? So I was in there with um, so two other songwriters, Harv and Felicia. And I was kind of intimidated because I know Harv had worked like with Justin Bieber and some other big names. And I was like, I thought oh that's God, the Harv you were talking about. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm like, ah, cool, like, dress cool, you know? Like, going to the studio, I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> um, and so everything that they wanted, what when we were talking about, it was really hard because they were like, make it cool, make it, you know, different. And I'm like, what well, if we just make it, like, like fun and, um, like, not that serious, you know? Because I feel like the world is just also insane right now. So if we just have something where people can just feel free, that was kind of my goal. And so then we came up with Party with a Weirdo. Um, And at first it was actually called Waterbed. And it was about kind of just like... (laughs) What? I I know, so random. (laughs) But it's kind of about... (laughs) It was just kind of about like the same thing though. It was just feeling free and rolling around, you know, just not really making sense. And then we thought of uh, (laughs) lyrics, you know. (laughs) <laughs> um, and then we changed it to like being a weirdo just straight up and it just felt like really good to me and we kind of just locked that and ran with it so and, like how many more sessions do you do with those guys after that 
I think we did like three or four total. Oh, wow. How yeah. many songs did you get? One with them. <laughs> <laughs> Because they were also my first session, so it was the first time I was like going in alone without you know like a label. Oh, or dude, without... what is that like? I mean, scary. Do you come prepared with anything? I mean, I had a binder and a laptop, but I mean, I looked like an idiot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, you know. it's your first day at school. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, am I doing this right? <laughs> God, it's funny because Har- Harv wrote Peaches for Justin Bieber. Huh? That's right. So how how did you get? Maybe I missed it, but how did you get connected with him? Um, so. My manager, music manager, Christiana, do less management. Um, she's good friends with uh, Mateus, who is, I guess, yeah. one of the guys who reps Harv and Felicia, um, or is very like close close with them. And so it just kind of worked out. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So how many songs do you have ready to go outside of this one? I mean, we have like 20, but I mean, I don't know which one is next. We're talking about it right now. Um I just, I don't know, because it feels like I, I just released this, and she's already like, it's time for the next one, and I was like, oh my god, I have to make a video today too, you know, so it's just like a lot, um, but I think uh, I think we're on track to do another one in, in seven weeks, which I'm nervous about. That's wild. Hopefully this one does well, you know? It will. So I think your audience will translate. I, you did well with your book. Yeah. Yeah, I, you have a really unique audience that's really young and really wide, and I think it's going to translate. I hope so, man. Um, yeah, I hope so. You've built this community. I mean, 18 million people on YouTube. What is it, 16 million on TikTok or something? Yeah, 14. So that's crazy. 3 million on Instagram. Yeah, and honestly, like, I don't even know how it happened. Like, it's insane. Um, I just feel like it's not real. <laughs> Do you, do, to some extent, like when you think about the numbers, do you how, how do you view it? Like what what when? How do you see even your notifications tab? <laughs> I don't click on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I, I I feel like I don't let myself really think about it that much because I want to just stay focused on you know the things that that are inspiring. If I could tra- start going down, like oh, like I'm getting more followers if I do this or this then I feel like it would hinder a lot of my creative process instead what, of what is your creative process locking myself in a dark room late at night and just you know meditating essentially are you doing the same sort of process for different things you're making like does yeah. like do you do the same thing for music that you're doing for I don't know to come up with a video yeah yeah 100% like and and I feel like that's always been my whole life though, like, um, with everything, even like homework at school, I would just need the same situation for everything in order to like excel. <laughs> I'm the same way. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm consistent. Did I wear the same pair of shoes for like years? Cause I Why? thought like if I didn't wear the same pair of shoes, I would fuck up. And then like every time I would change studios, I would need certain things to come with me. Cause like if I didn't have those things, I would never be able to do my job. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I tried to apply the same thing all the time. So are and you OCD a little bit too? Not really because I've, I smoke weed to kind of like keep me from being really too crazy anal and like obsessed with things. Um, cause I used to be, I, I had like more asshole tendencies, right? Like little things would like, <laughs> face. little things would irk mm, me. Boy. And like, if they weren't exactly the same way, um, it was really hard. And then matching that with having to like find a team and like build a team and balance right. the whole thing. Um, it was definitely a learning process and it's insane ADD, ADHD. I mean, I had it really, I had, you know, I had it. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> still have it. Uh, yeah, it's definitely something that has been a challenge, but I also think a weird blessing, you know? Yeah. Don't you think it's kind of a superpower? Oh yeah. I mean, but w- w- when you channel it the right way, right. So, and I am Spend guilty. Day. Yeah. I'm guilty of le- it letting, like getting the best of me. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't want to like be like, oh, it's the best thing ever every single day. No, I mean, there's waves where it's terrible and it really throws me off and it's hard to communicate and hard right. to process sometimes. And How do you navigate that, though? Um, I listen a lot and I try to listen and, like, I try to be focused on one thing. The issue is if I get really focused on something and then somebody comes in and tries to, like, throw focus, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to not snap at them. Same, or for especially not, Adderall. Yeah, or for it to not seem like I'm snapping at them. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because sometimes I'm not actually snapping. I'm actually just trying to, like, maintain focus while trying to also respond to them. Right. Um, 
Yeah. I also think too, like I've, I, I've gotten really much better at managing my ADHD and ADD by, I won't take Adderall because like it does like change my personality in ways, but like I've gotten really good at being able to like, okay, if scrolling is what I need to do to just stay focused on whatever somebody's telling me, then I'm going to do it. Mm. But I'll retain everything that you're telling me. Mm. I've tried to figure out different ways to like keep my mind like, do you get what I'm saying? Like sometimes it actually works where my mind works better if I'm doing two things at once, but like giving one thing 10% and the other thing 90. Absolutely. I tell my mom all the time, like I have to find ways to trick my brain. Yeah. Like that's literally what it is. She's like, can you come over and clean? I'm like, not if you ask me like that, but if you tell, told me and you're a little like sneaky about it, then yes. You show up. <laughs> no, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. Do you and your, do you and your mom just have like a long list of video ideas or how do you create those? Um, half the time I just spring something on her and, you know, she has no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first time you were like, hey, I want you to make a video with me for this platform called TikTok? Yes. And she had to get ready, make sure her makeup was perfect. <laughs> well, she looks great in every video. <sighs> she does. <laughs> she does. But I look terrible. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah. mom. <laughs> Your shot's great, but I'm just <laughs> rushing for the daylight here, you know? Um, no, but it's part of her charm and I like love her for it. And I like, I would always tell people growing up. Um, for Christmas, it was always a running joke that we had to wait till like noon or one o'clock to run out to the, you know, open the stockings and Christmas presents because mom had to finish putting on her face and she had to leave the pack with my dad had to like, when they were together, he had to like walk backwards. She had like the whole regimen so that, you know, it had to look perfect and she had to look perfect and her kids and, you know, I just think it's amazing. Like, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it, it, there is something to the fact that, like, over the last few years, all you've been doing is gathering and filming and documenting memories. It's just true. you and your mom and your family. That's true. Like, there is a beautiful side to the whole thing, in addition to you probably getting rich. But, well, I'm a terrible business owner. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. You're a perfectionist and you don't have any team. So, like, where where are you spending money? Um... On ball pits, <laughs> you know, <laughs> things like that. Or okay, like, you're you rich know, enough to have a ball pit. Or like the book, the book project, you know, I'm like, oh, I should have gone through a publisher. You oh, know? you did that all yourself? Yeah. Oh, that's not so great. warehouse, <laughs> you know, and like all these things. Of course, I'm not going to retain all this because I like, I'm a creative. I'm not. Wait, why would you do that? You're really you're, self-sabotage. No, but you're kind of famous, dude. Like you have a huge following. You could have easily gone to anybody and been like, I right. have, I don't know, like 50, 60 million followers. Can we make a children's book together? Right. They'd right. Probably say yes. But see, also, this might be an ADHD thing too, but I just get so excited that I have to like do it now. And then like a week will go by and the whole thing's done. And now it's like, oh, I could have like actually done this the right way. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's something I've had to figure out. Like, I've had to, like, like be okay with coming up with something and, like, going 100% into it and then having to, like, pull it back. And mm. then, like, it will find its way. That's but hard. not everything finds its way, and that's okay. And that's kind of how I, like, determine what is good and what isn't. Really? Okay. Yeah, sometimes. Like, almost, like, meant to be kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then sometimes I have good ideas I sit on for years, and I'm like, oh, that's still a good idea. Right. And then when I whip it out again, maybe it's the time, maybe it isn't. You know what I mean, dude? Maybe, you never know. Like the music thing for me. Exactly. So, yeah. But why now, genuinely? Like with everything going on in your life and I know. Your, content, time. your content flow <laughs> being what it is, why are we making and releasing music today? Um, it just fell into place. Like it, it almost felt like a God thing to me. Um, so it, it was like I, I met Christiana, my music manager, like at the right time. And then all the pieces just lined up together and it just felt like it worked. And I was like, OK, either I do this or I and I take a risk and, you know, maybe I'm not sleeping for 72 hours. But um, the other side of it is I'll have regrets and I hate regrets. I will like hate it if I ever have one. So I just had to give it a shot. And um, like I said as well, like at the core, I music is really in my heart and soul. So it, I'm like, if I have that passion, why shouldn't I? No, you got to do it? it. You really got to do it. I'm excited. I want to be, I, I want to really experience this artist project, don't you? Yeah. Well, is are it, you a weirdo? Yeah. Fuck then yeah. Then you can join. When's Thank the, you. When's the music video out? Oh my god! I thought it was supposed to be out already today. It yeah, was supposed to be out today. I was looking for it because we were told it was going to be out before you came in, and I was looking. I said, I can't find this thing. Yeah, he's doing it himself. Sore subject. Well, That's I, what he's been well, doing. I understand that. So when is it coming out? It's like, <laughs> Seventy-two hours, brother. <laughs> it was like I called 
Christiana this morning and like, oh my God, can we please push this back? You know, I was like freaking out. Um, but it'll be probably beginning of next week or mid next week at some point. Okay. But it's, I'm so excited about it. Like it's really came together. Are you doing your music independently too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That yeah. you can do independently. The right. book thing, like, right. someone would have paid you in advance for that, bro. Especially for a children's book. Like, I'm an idiot. Yeah, you know? like, but also, like, you need store distribution for children's books. Like, right. you want to be where, pe- like, parents are also, be like, existing already looking for, for books. But the good thing, though, is that it allowed me to, like, like, I sold, like, we're a bestseller without anyone knowing. So we can take that to publishers and... Be like, look, now give us like a huge advance because we did this by ourselves. And for you your next over. book? Yeah. Or to, you know, hand over the rights for the first one. And, uh, you, you know, make a re- movie out of it? Yeah. All of the above. <laughs> now I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you did the right thing. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know, if it doesn't work out, then it just, it's not the right time. You, you can know? still say you were a published author by yourself. Exactly. You published yourself. Yeah, Ginger with the Soul, LLC. Yeah. Publisher. Look at you. <laughs> so. You have a soul. You have a good one. You Thanks. Were, you it, do too. Thank you. It is like a weird <laughs> misconception that people have that like gingers do not have souls. And there's also like parts of the world that like really look down upon gingers. I think it's unfair. People with red hair, they deserve better. Agreed. You once yeah. said you want to be the first redhead on Mars. I did? Yep, three years ago in a video about yourself. <laughs> Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> Would you say that? I'm wonder, scared. Do you still want to do that? One hundred percent. Yeah, you said you said you want to be the first redhead on the red planet. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Sounds like a good accomplishment. So that's my that's my next project. <laughs> Getting to Mars. Elon Musk. <laughs> Let's go. So I'm confused by the way you spell your name. Oh God. Is that a mistake? No. Um, okay. Here's the story. <laughs> My mom's going to kill me. It's spelled with two E's. So, okay. (laughs) My real name is Peter. But my mom said when I went to middle school, she's like, now people might make fun of you. I had like big glasses. It was super skinny. I was actually really short at the time. Um, And she's like, you might get picked on. So you should change your name to Pete. And I'm like, mom, I'm not going to change my name to Pete. That's like the creepy Uncle Pete, you know, (laughs) like with P-E-T-E. That's what I think of. And, but she forced me because she really cared about me. And so I'm like, well, then I'm doing it my way. And so I changed it to P-E-E-T. Um, but the reason why is because she's like, people are going to call you Peter the Penis. And I'm like, <laughs> mom, what? no one has ever said that in my life. I'm like, why would you even say that? And why would you name me Peter then? Oh like, <laughs> why do I feel like your mom looks at you in that moment was like, if kids are going to call you anything... He kind of looks like a penis, so it's going to go with Peter. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm like, I thank you for caring, but like, what is this? Like, I'm. (laughs) Yeah, your mom's the real star of the show, isn't she? I know, yeah. She does. She is a superstar. I know. She's the best. Oh my God. She's a mess in the best way. (laughs) I also had no idea that your siblings are adopted. So, like, your parents have beautiful hearts. Like, really, like, because the other thing, too, that people do not talk about enough is that, like, so many little people are left without parents. Like yes. it is like yes. there's a high rate of of it, these these people who are just left in in orphanages all over the world. Right. It's really sad, and it, it really breaks your heart when you think about it. Yeah, and also like I mean, there's so much misconception about it. So and and that's what's so sad because all these doctors, you know, especially like. Uh, in the like 80s 90s like they had no idea really any of any facts about it because i mean my mom's type for example and my dad's type of dwarfism i'm the first ever coming from his type and her type in the history books that's crazy so that's why they were like don't have a child my mom's like i was gonna do i'm gonna do it and um anyway and that they like followed me for a couple years because they weren't sure like which what was gonna happen wow so, I mean, I just, I just learned that, like, recently. And I was like, what? That's so are insane. you the only kid that your parents had, actually? or And all your siblings are adopted? Um, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. that's pretty wild. Yeah, it is wild. Because um, everyone thinks the opposite, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> Literally. And, like, my brother and sister doesn't, don't, don't like, we kind of have this pact that we don't talk about it, you yeah. know? But since you brought it up, it's fine. Um... 
And it's just so interesting because if everyone knew, then it would just be so wild. But like, you know, that, I'm surprised you even learned that, learned that information. <laughs> you really did a deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> no need to freak out. <laughs> it's okay. What is the science behind that? Have you looked into it? Like why you you came out like a normal <clears throat> normal height? Um, it's just or I got the height? yeah I've I got the recessive genes. Okay, so like dwarfism is a sorry I need to take a drink. I'm like yeah, please Justin <laughs> <laughs> Justin to daylight fake lights. I know lights. it's like it's been a rough seventy two hours, man. <laughs> um, so uh, dwarfism is a dominant gene and. I got the recessives, so that's that's the reason why. Oh, wow, it's pretty actually pretty simple. Yeah. Um, it's like ready to like talk for ten minutes. Yeah. It's like I'm one so, sentence. That's what I was prepared for. God, I hate myself. <laughs> so, if you were to have a child, is there a higher chance that it'd have a dwarf, it would be a dwarf because you have no, that I have gene? the same chance as you. Really? Yeah, because I didn't get the gene. If I would have gotten the gene, I would have been one. That's so fascinating. It's yeah, it's really crazy. Your story's wild. And also, like, your fuel and motivation as to why you do things is very much linked to, like, that where you come from and who and, like, who you are. Like, your nurture. Right. It's pretty, it's really special. I think yeah. it actually will push you to make some really genuine stuff. I'm excited to watch you make music. I haven't, being honest, I haven't listened to your old stuff. Don't. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> don't. I'm fine. Don't I don't need to listen to Zero Gravity or Euphoria spelled U number four I A. What the? <laughs> so cool. <laughs> yeah. Didn't ever listen to Young Wild Free. Oh my God. Didn't listen to Five West. But you know what I listened to? Pete with Two East Montesinko. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> also, oh I was surprised gosh. to hear, like, you have a stylist who is actually in the boy group with you? He was. Don't tell me he styled you today. No, I stopped myself. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have holes in your socks. Is that fashion or, or no? I just don't really care. Survival. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I respect sense. that. I like that. Me too. It's yeah. like there's too much, you know. There's too much life going on, really. Like laundry's hard enough, you know. <laughs> 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 For real, you gotta be honest with me though. You have to be making some money. Do you need a yeah. cleaning lady? Like I'll send her to your house. Like if you can't do laundry, I'll help you out. <laughs> no, I'm making money. Like it's good, but um, I just have to like you know organize my life. <laughs> It's hard. Yeah, because it's like, do I want to wake up and do laundry, or do I want to no. make a video? No, you shouldn't do that. Or... No, but you can have a cleaning like, lady. Like, You can help actually, like, you know, you can pay somebody really well and to help you, like, manage your house and manage your clothes, and you can not think about it, and then also help somebody else out in the process, and mm -hmm. it's a whole thing, you know? It's true. You don't need to be focused on your laundry. That's true. <laughs> or the holes in your socks. But then it's like, oh, no, I have to, like, find the person, and then how do I trust them, and then like, well, forget it. Okay. You know. <laughs> okay, so you're already giving up. <laughs> That's okay. my ADHD, you know, flaw. Yeah. It's yeah. like, all right, too much work. But, like, it would actually help, though, if I just did totally. it. Totally. I mean, the upside is you're saving money. <laughs> That's true. Like, you could have an assistant. You definitely probably don't have one of those. I do, yeah. Oh, you do? So, with, what like, work stuff, do? like, I'll find the right help a lot, but... How do you trust them? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mm. But they're usually like close friends um, because I've tried to just, you know, hire people through like YouTube refers me or, you know, like somebody I've, I know. And then it really is just the people who really understand how my brain works and like me for it is usually the best for me. So I've like learned that too. Have you felt that? Yeah. I don't know. Dan and I are really opposite. We've been working together for like 11 years. We couldn't be any more opposite. Really? We have nothing in common. But to be fair, really? like, we also don't work a lot together. Yeah. Oh. Only when we're in the room doing this. Yeah. He talking. does his thing over there. I do my thing over here. We come here, do this, and then it's better that go way. our separate ways. Were you guys fr friends first? No, no, we met through this oh, you career. Did? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I've been doing the show for 17 years. What am I at 12? Yeah, you're 11, 12. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I didn't time. realize it was that long. Uh, uh, That's amazing. No, it's crazy. Okay. Amazing. It's one way to describe it. Well, yeah, you're able to sustain for this long. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, knock on wood, yeah, right? I mean, most shows yeah. last like what six episodes, and people call it quits. <laughs> so what are we at? We're 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 doing well. To be fair, though, most radio shows go this long, and we started as a radio show. Well, I started as like an online radio show, and then we became a real radio show, 
And then now you were for Amazon Music. So I don't know. I feel like we can be doing this forever. Like, yeah. why wouldn't we? Like, uh, will it take different shape? Will it evolve over the years? Yeah. But I think at its core, it's going to be the exact same thing. Like, right. what we're doing here will never go out of style. Right. I, I do believe that. Like, there's very few things that are timeless in culture. And I've been sitting at this table in some way, shape, or form for the last 17 years, like, paying deep attention to it. And it is... Like, things ebb and flow, things come and go, but a couple things have the ability to just be redressed and live forever. This, I think, is one of them. Yeah. yeah. And I also think, like, it's what you told me earlier of, like, it's just at the core, you know, this is, like, you. This is your totally your, your thing, you know. It's um, what inspires you, you know. Very much what I was meant to do. Yeah. Do you feel like TikTok was just, a, like, a, a, a means to getting you to a place where you get to do what you're yeah. meant to do? Or do you feel like you were meant to be telling your story and your family's story and the story of the Cecil Hotel via TikTok? <laughs> I'm here for TikTok. No, I mean, but kidding. a dude, like, no. <laughs> but think, I do think about this in particular with you. It's like so many people got a chance to hear your story and your family story and feel yeah. understood and seen. And a lot of people who have differences that are of varying differences, like a bunch of... They don't just need to be little people to be able to resonate and understand and feel seen and understood by the stuff you make, you know? Right. It is important. Yeah, 100%. And I think that, like, that's what's so cool about TikTok and, you know, these social media apps right now is, like, people are able to discover things and not feel so alone. And so it's been really cool to, I guess, just witness that and be a part of that. And your comment section seems pretty positive. Always. Like, there's not— I know. Knock on wood. Yeah. Because my brother's is, like, the worst. Um, people— like, like the worst. Why do you think that is? Like, why do you think you got the positivity and he got the negativity? Um, I don't know. He's cringy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's his fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. But actually, no, I really think that's it, though. <laughs> yeah. For do you, real. Do you tell him? Yeah, but he doesn't get it. He's like a dad, you know, <laughs> and he's like, um, like he he's not very like aware. You know, he deals with fourth graders. Yeah, you like know, he, he doesn't, doesn't really care. Cringe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And um, I don't know. He's just—he's always been cringe to me because he's older than me. So yeah, he's your brother. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I don't know why. Because it, like, what really sucks is people like attack my nieces, and it really pisses me off. No, that's not right. Uh, like saying that oh she looks like Pennywise and like just the worst comments like death to them. And I'm like I'm gonna find all your guys' addresses and do something because like yeah, you don't mess up. with my nieces. That's fucked up. Like mess with my brother, but don't mess with my <laughs> nieces, you know. I don't like that. Yeah, it's crazy. What do you think about that subjecting I mean your family to that the internet? There is something about family vloggers and that whole conversation. Like Yeah, and it's like how like right now especially people are talking about it a lot. Um I don't know, because I've been thinking about that too lately. I just don't know. I think, I know my niece loves to do the videos, but I just don't want them to get made fun of, you know, when they get older, or have it hinder anything negatively. Because, yeah. I mean, we also aren't, like, at a day and age yet where we've seen the effects of, of that yet. I don't <laughs> we think, have right? no idea. Yeah, like, what if they're totally go psycho, mm -hmm. you know, when they're 18 or something like I don't know um I just want them to be happy and like have a good time in life <laughs> the internet's really cruel the world's cruel the, the scariest part about having a kid is the world yeah it's not even my inability to like take care of a child and to love a child and raise a child it's everybody and everything else it's too much man yeah it's a scary place yeah and also like yeah I wouldn't want to bring, bring them into that like Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just not the right time. It's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. Party like a weirdo, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally different subject waiting <laughs> for you. Below, you can listen to Pete's music. It's waiting for you on Amazon Music. Heck yeah. What are you thinking? Well, I know you kind of said, like, people shouldn't even look at it like this, but, like, is dwarf and little person the correct terminology? Yes. Okay. So, um, midget is the bad one. Okay. And... Like, dwarfism is, like, the clinical, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then little people, I mean, it sounds bad. Like, you're a little person. That's but exactly how I felt. I was like, I know you've been referring to it that, but to me, it's like, do they want to be referred to as that? It's because that's the community community as a whole. It's like little people of America. And so I think 
you know, we just view it a little bit differently, mm-hmm. like an organization. But yeah, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Um, but at the end of the day, I just want to be, I think, called by their name, you know? Exactly. Um, which is kind of, you know, the end message there. It's like, yeah, they're a medical term, but like they're people. Yeah. Um, Same as everyone else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm excited for your music, man. Yeah, me too. I'm interested. So you have 20 songs, so like an EP maybe, singles, you want to do that waterfall? Yeah, we're going to do singles. Giddy um, up. And just kind of like testing, you know, because some, something might hit. Like it might be this weird, like it might be like a classical piece, you know, or it might be that hits and resonates or, but I don't know. I just want to do what feels good. And um, Party at the Weirdo to me just feels really good. It feels like I just want to run around and, you know, get weird. And, and a my, part of feeling good, though, does that mean you're not, like, locked to a genre? So from Sonics, you're just kind of down for anything? Yeah. I mean, I, I've always loved pop. So at the end of the day, like, it's going to probably be pop. But I'm, I don't know, I love experimenting. So cool. it's kind of wherever the creativity goes or whoever else is in the room. Like, if it's Harv and Felicia, then it's probably going to be pop, you know? Who else have you been doing sessions with? Um, so I've done Fallon... Um, and Chris. So basically I've just done a bunch of random like sessions and just kind of seeing who I really resonate with because I, this is all very new that we actually like rushed this release because I started in like November, I want to say. And for music, that's, it, I mean, that's really quick and, um, great for me. Cause you know, I'm fast. I like to be fast. And so I, I don't know. It's, I'm just trying to get a sense of who I like to be in the room with or where I feel the most um, creative. Take it slow. And yeah. find the people you are down to be vulnerable with. Yeah, because it is such a different vibe, you know? Yeah, I want to hear your story through music. Oh, it's been a long one. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, and it, 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 it like all started with boy bands. <laughs> I was going to say, is there any similarities between creating with a, a boy band compared to yourself now? No, because a boy band, like, they just tell you what to say. Like, studio next Tuesday or, you know, like, flying to Nashville. And they're like, okay, you sing this line. Okay, that's your line. You sing this line. You know, and so now I'm like, oh, I have to actually put my, like, my mix into this. You know, I actually have to be vulnerable and talk about my day and my struggles. Like, this is weird, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, like, it's more, like, liberating mm-hmm. at the same time. So, but I do miss being a puppet a little bit because then you don't have to think. Yeah. <laughs> it's always nice to like just get thrown in, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then like your success is determined by somebody else, and I feel like yeah, you can it, never have that. Yeah, and it didn't work for me. No. So, yeah. Has any of your success allowed you to appreciate the difficulties in your life a little bit more? 100%. Um, 100%. I think, I mean, every difficult part of my life, I've been able to talk about it, and it's only like motivated more content or, you know, more songs or whatnot. And so it's also therapeutic, you know, like I was saying earlier. And it's just really cool to to be able to like do all those things at once, I guess. Um, I just thought of something. I, you know, when you're saying like my music journey, it actually all started with X Factor. <laughs> yeah, you tried to get on. Yeah. But they didn't want you. No. No, they did not. They said no. Again, well, one I, of the many places that would tell Pete Montezingo, well, get the fuck out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I sang Billionaire by Bruno Mars, oh, and I changed it to Famous instead of Billionaires. So, like, of course they're going to be like, can you please leave? <laughs> wait, wait. So I want to be famous. Oh, I get it. It's like it doesn't even go with the syllables. No, that doesn't fit. <laughs> not did, at all. Did you get to the judges' rounds? Yeah. Who'd well, probably sing? for famously being bad. Like, I think, or, no. I was pretty good, who'd though. You, who'd, okay. you, who'd you sing in front of? Actually. <laughs> Let's pull it up and watch. <laughs> who'd you sing in front of? Um, Simon, the... um, Paula, Nicole, and L.A. Reid. Wow. <laughs> That's like original x Like the OGs, crew. yeah. Yeah. It, it was scary. So did <laughs> Wipeout come after X-Factor? That was or? before. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, wipeout was so they saw your wipeout. They saw you on wipeout and said, oh, yeah. <laughs> this, "This guy has what it takes. <laughs> <This> guy, <laughs> he's gonna be something." <laughs> oh my god! Wipeout always looked fun. I'm jealous you got to do it. Yeah. Was Did it you fun? guys ever watch it? Yes. Yeah, was <laughs> yeah, you got fucked All up. All contestants on that. are weird. By the way, like, are they? like you wouldn't think that they were real. <laughs> I've never met anyone who's been on it, though, because I don't know who the fuck wants to. Uh, 
throw out their back, ricocheting off of a giant red ball. I was throwing ball. up blood, by the way. <laughs> what? Yeah. No way. They what? had to like put me in a stretcher until I stopped throwing up blood. That's it was great insane. TV, though. Oh, yeah, it was great. But they didn't air it. <laughs> of oh. course not. Uh. <laughs> Wait, so what So what? What part of the course <laughs> destroyed you, punctured your lung? The first one. Really? <laughs> yeah. It but was you the... healed and kept going? Well, yeah, and I was like the last contestant. And so, like, they have like 24 or whatever. And then, like, the ones, like, they go straight into the second round. And so the people who are first get to wait like three hours and rest. And I was like the second to last one. And so I was throwing up blood. And they're like, you made it to the next round. You got to get up onto the next platform and do the thing. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, $50,000, though. Like, I'm poor. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you came in second place and won zero dollars. Yeah. And, and you know what the worst part is? What? Is I was the second fastest scorer in the entire season. I was just on the episode with the guy who had the, the first. <laughs> the, no free will. You know, I'm like, well, was it meant to have the money? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, the universe looked out for you, though. It's true. Because eventually it came. I know. This has happened to me, too. I was it's told, weird. I was told no, like, hundreds of times. Like, I did so many pilots and, like, so many, like, so many dudes. Like, right. Like, a dozen. Right. And, like, a dozen. And then the one thing that was actually successful was genuinely just me. <laughs> right. It's fucked. <laughs> <fun. laughs> it's weird. Like, whenever I went after anything else, it was like never working. It's like, out. no, I came to Hollywood to like be someone else. Like, no, yeah, no. but the reality is like you. Yeah. You are it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, totally can relate though. But that's just like, yeah, you, you run from exactly what would change your life, which is your family. Right. You yes. Just, that's, it's really, it's, it, it is kind of special at the same time. It is. And I, does it bring you guys closer or does it, I mean, with 100%. your mom, it has to. Yeah, 100%. And it's really allowed me to like be there for her, you know, and I'm so glad she moved to LA because she was in Seattle. Wow. And so um, I'm like, thank God. <laughs> That's it's amazing. Yeah. And also like, yeah, like your whole family, your, even your brother having a career, he has to make some money on TikTok even with the haters. No, he doesn't. Okay, got it. <laughs> I see him on my feed though. He's like, how do I make money? And I'm just like, well, you gotta do things differently, like do brand deals and, you know, talk to these partners and go over here and do this. And it is a whole thing that you have to learn, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, it was a learning curve for me at least. Like, I was like, holy, it's just insane. Um, but he just doesn't, I think, really care that much. Like he loves being a teacher and he loves being a, you know, a dad. So like, can't blame him for it. But yeah, we need I'm like, more people but, like him. I'm like, but don't you want like $20,000? <laughs> like, please just like take a brand deal. Yeah. Oh God. But, yeah, Cause um, he could. Yeah. He could. I mean, Damn. I don't know. You got a whole little, you got a whole family going on there. A whole little fame operation. Yeah. The only problem though is just, we've gotten so many reality show offers. I was going to ask about that. Really? Yeah. And I mean, we will not do it because no one needs another TLC dwarf thing. No, the little channel, like come on. <laughs> but also, I gotta, I gotta say, like I probably know every production company that reached out to you. Like they gotta do better. Like they yes. need to be more creative. Yeah, and we told them that pretty much. Like that, you need to do better. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, we think like your mom can go on a date with a tall guy. I'm just like, mm. oh, that's insane. People, I'm like, so people can walk by and you know you get the shock value and all that. I'm like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's, again, by the way, like, has been done, Little People, Big World. I've seen all these shows like, before. Let's do something else, you know? Yeah. Let's actually, like, be real this time, like, for once. You know? <sighs> that's wild. But um, I'm still holding out, though. Like, I want to do a show at one point, like, do uh, like create a show where it actually is, like, a sitcom or, you know, a TV. Do that. Yeah. Do a scripted show based on your life. That's funny. I'd watch that. Or just even if, you know, people who have dwarfism or... Yeah. Actually, like the main actors. Love because that. you don't really see that except Peter Dinklage. So, yeah. That's very true, too. Because there's just so much. And this doesn't have to be always a reality show. No, 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 no. And by the That's way, I think you have like more creative freedom with a scripted program. You can do more. That's be true. fun. You can actually, you know, make progress, make change. That's cool. Yeah. And yeah, that's true. Because those contracts for the non scripted are insane. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! And also, yeah, all those like producers at the non-scripted places being like, "I got this great idea." There's this family and this kid blowing up on TikTok. <laughs> Have you heard? There's already 18 million people subscribed to him, yeah. but I'm <laughs> gonna discover him and put him on TV because that's exactly what you fucking need. Yeah, he's gonna be a star. <laughs> to make t like 
eight to ten thousand dollars per reality show episode just to be exploited and to have yeah. these people with cameras around you eighteen Pass. hours a day. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah, the people are dumb. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> you are so dumb. <laughs> and really, yeah. that's really what the, you know. You don't make a lot of money doing that, you know. No. And and to be fair, your whole family would get their own salary, so they'd all make between like seven and ten grand. Well takes somebody who's produced shows like this to like tell you this is how it works and they get exploited like to no end you have no control over the edit no matter yeah, they're like, how we'll popular you, you are you can trust us oh, no. come on have you do you know about our production company no oh, yeah like, uh, we produce blah, 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 blah. yeah get a, get a grip yeah, throwing up blood again yeah, that's, <laughs> yes out of stress you should yeah. they're yeah. so stupid yeah like that's the last type of show you need yeah agreed God. that's validating you control here, the edit and you get rich and you do your own thing. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Exactly. It'd be totally different if you didn't have, I don't know, 18 million subscribers on fucking YouTube. <laughs> you have a lot of subscribers. Crazy. I know. Why yeah. the, by the way, more than any traditional network will have on their fucking YouTube channels and or watching their actual networks. Yeah. And they were like, oh, our biggest, we got their biggest live count uh, for our show, whatever it was at the time. I think it was my, uh, something, my sister, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Sister wives, something. <laughs> something like that. And they're like, yeah, we got, um, like, it was our second highest rating ever. And I'm like, I think it was like, what was it? Like, I mean, it wasn't that many people. <laughs> and I'm like. No, it could have been hundreds of thousands, not even in the millions. And they would have said that that was still pretty I don't good. even think it was in the hundreds of, hundreds of thousands, like it's the live really not, viewing. Yeah. I was good. like, this is it. And then you want me to like stop posting videos. You know, it's like weird. I don't know. Like, you don't ever do that. Yeah. It's just such a crazy world, man. Like, yeah, it is. I, it has to be a lot that you're navigating because with online success, your inbox has to be at <laughs> one point had to have been flooded with just people wanting to take advantage in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, totally. But it's weird. Like, <laughs> success has many fathers and failures, an orphan. Like, nobody really gave much shit. There's no playbook. Yeah, you know, and it, especially in the digital age, like you know, it's wow, wow, west out here, TikTok and. All that shit. It's but it like, is wild, though. Like, not many people, nobody really cared about anything that you were doing pre-Cecil Hotel, pre-making videos with your mom. I know. And now the world lights up your inbox. Yeah, I'm like, I was, like, I, I oh, yeah, I was, like, talking to YouTube uh, a couple weeks ago, and they were like, so, like, a basic interview. So how long have you been um, doing YouTube for? And I'm like, well... <laughs> Since 2007, <laughs> since, since <the> <laughs> no one started. cared until COVID happened, you know? It's like, delete those videos now, pretend like I just started. So. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Uh, yeah, it's weird, you know? But your path continues to be written every single day. Exactly. Excited for more music to come. Come back on our show. Yeah, you're, absolutely. You're always invited. Come over to my mom's house. Break we'll, your backs. We'd love to. <laughs> I would love to experience that. It must be. Do you still kind of find it fascinating when you go home? Or are you kind of just so used to it at this point? I mean, no, that's home to me. Like, it's just, if things aren't low, it's weird. So <laughs> that's why in my kitchen at home, everything's low. Is and it I'm really? like, why do I do this? <laughs> at your own house? You did? Yeah. No like, all the plates are like, you have to bend down every time. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Your whole life has been shaped off of your experience, which makes yeah. the most sense. Like, of course, everything in your own, your normal, your own house would be low because that's what you're used to. It's muscle yeah. memory. He's not yeah. going up. He's that, going down. That, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's so true. Your whole life you grew up, that was normal to you. Like going to friends' houses and I'm like, where are the plates? They're like, up there. <laughs> They're like, why are you looking down at like, you know, the, cl <laughs> the bleach, you know? Do you think about like finding a, like a, a partner, like a lover, or, I don't know, somebody in uh, life? I don't know. There's just a lot there. I once heard you say you time. have con commitment issues and whenever a relationship gets to about a year, you break it off. How... Do you know this? Because you said it. And Where, I found when it. did I say that? In was some, that a tweet? No, it was in some video you made it like three or four years ago. Oh. Oh, God. Yeah, definitely a lot of commitment issues. I just learned that I was a um, avoidant mm -hmm. attachment style. And so I'm like, oh, yikes, we're the problem. Got to fix that. Avoidant. So therapy it is. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but you'd, you'd actually have relationships with people for a year and then you just dip? Yeah. I mean, like, I would like track it. Yeah. When was the last time you were in a relationship? Um, it's been a minute. Yeah. But also, like, that's okay because, you know, I feel like I'm in a relationship with my career right now. Total, 100%. It's full time. And know. it does take a certain level of selfishness to be successful. Yeah. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. I like to say believing in yourself. Sure. 
It's selfish, <laughs> but sure, <laughs> it's okay though. Yeah, like some like selfish like self love isn't selfish, right? Right, That's and true. it is giving yourself love, but also like giving yourself love could allow for a better life for everybody in your family and a better you for whatever partner is going to come your way when exactly. the time is right. So exactly, it's more about focusing on you for growth. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's the right place to be in. I agree. Damn, <laughs> Pete Montezingo, eh? Mm-hmm. You oh, good? Man. Yeah. Listen to Pete's music. It's waiting for you on Amazon Music. Party with a weirdo. Party with a weirdo. Party with a weirdo. <laughs> music video. Comedian. No. <laughs> I just like, don't know necessarily know if I like be down to just like if you go you want party with this weirdo I'd probably be hesitant I'm just being honest with you but well, you, but you said you're a weirdo yourself I am weird but like I think like but like everyone's their own type of weird I guess that's true yeah well maybe party with a creep is different <laughs> <laughs> yeah weirdo and creep is not the same thing it, yes so weirdo let me specify. I Means just zany, quirky. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I am weird. Um, ball pits and yeah, ball pits. Yeah, not you know, not creepy. Yeah, not like an Uncle Pete or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> P E T E. Exactly. By the way, <laughs> P E T E. Peter the penis. God. Thanks for being here. <laughs> I really appreciate you. Be on the single. Oh, that note. <laughs> oh my God. You're amazing. Thanks, oh, man. Oh man. Here.